Hi ladies, I'm Rebecca, the founder of the Female Entrepreneurs Network, and welcome to the show. <laughs> Here you're going to find badass human beings, creators, adventurous people, and massive action takers. If you need any more support or love, head over to femaleentrepreneursnetwork.com to find everything that you could ever possibly need. Always remember to speak your truth, be who you are, because you are always enough. And there is someone out there who needs to hear your message today. Enjoy this episode. And if you love us, share us with your mates. I love you all. Rebecca. Welcome, Christy, to the Female Entrepreneurs Network. Hi. <laughs> Glad to be here. I'm so, so excited to chat with you. So Christy Adams is a writer, a coach, and a travel addict. But I'm going to let you take over, Christy, and explain to us what you do and how you work with your clients. Hi. Um, yes, I write. I've got a novel out and I'm just working on my next one. My ambition is to have a whole bookcase full of books that have got my name on, which sounds a bit arrogant, but that's what I want. Sounds amazing. Um, and because I use writing as a therapy when I escape from the corporate rat race, um, I'm a firm believer in the power of words to help people. So that's why I went into the coaching side. So it's very much based around... Um, using words and your writing as a way forward, whether you choose to be sort of a career writer or just as therapy so that you can move on in other areas or however you choose to use your words because they're very powerful. And then the travel side, I do a run a travel blog, but also I'm just addicted to travel, which was a luxury I didn't have when I was younger. So I think that's why I'm making the most of it now. So I think that about covers it. And then I've got, I've got a really low boredom threshold. So I've got other things going on that I can dabble in when I get bored. So I'm a knitter, which sounds really boring, but I used to have a knitting company and I work a lot with the over fifties to try and get them to look forward instead of constantly looking back. Cause I think there's so much sort of negativity at the moment in media and everywhere else that people are looking back a lot instead of looking forward to all the opportunities coming up. So that's something I feel strongly about as well. Mm, that's amazing so amazing and um so talk to me then you said that you do knitting but it sounds boring but you do it because you've got a low boredom threshold so it can't be boring then can it <laughs> true <laughs> it's not but it's a bit of a stereotype because I'm a grandma so people go oh granny's knit which <laughs> But it is well, yeah, my it passion is. and yeah. I'd love to knit I'd, I'd love to actually set up as part of my coaching a knitting for men class because they're catching oh. on as well now and the realising, I think it's just the little bit of stress management, really, that goes with creativity of any sort, whether it's sewing, knitting, writing, you know, just mm. going for a walk, I suppose. Just that escapism is good for stress levels because people are so tied up with the phones. And that's another thing that you can't have your phone in your hand when you're knitting. So that's another way that mm. it actually encourages sort of conversation. So I think I use that probably to escape a little bit myself from the stresses of social media and all the things that you need to do when you're working online which is what I do yeah so the people a lot of people are doing that coloring now aren't they yeah my yeah. friend bought me one for when I had my baby but I didn't end up using it I hope she's not listening <laughs> <laughs> um but um yeah I mean I can get like sometimes I'll sit coloring with my kids and I'll be like I can like it it does it's like makes you feel really calm and yeah present and just definitely when you're doing with the grandkids well I've got grandchildren now and when you do colouring it sounds so simplistic but it does you can't think about other things you just concentrate on are you going outside the lines or yeah so I think anything like that is good as long as you don't sit there for too many hours doing it but, but ironically they've now got colouring apps on your phone which I think is a bit of a, a cop out because I think the whole point is put your phone down and yeah tactile because I think paper and pens and books and pencils are they're, they're a tactile thing. So, and that's one piece of advice I always give people when they take up writing to buy a really beautiful pen and a beautiful journal. Because if every day you pick it up and it gives you pleasure, then that's where you start. Yeah, I love that. And I do that. Like I, in the morning, I wake up and I write before I do anything. And it just clears out your mind, doesn't it? Like, um, and I realized it more than ever recently I was chatting to someone and she just said 
I can't not have anything playing in the background. I can't have any, I can't have silence because my mind just runs away with me. And then before I know it, I end up in a spiral. Yeah. And I was thinking about it because she was like saying, or oh, like she was talking to me as if that happens for, for everyone. Mm. I was like, well, actually, no, I, like I, 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 I'm the opposite. I don't have anything on. Yeah. And I just don't have any, I don't, don't have anything. I think it's nice to not have, I mean, so many people, even when they go running or they go walking, mm. and I, when I walk, I have my headphones in, but sometimes when you don't and you forget them or you, you know, just have some five minutes to, with no noise, it does make you be a bit more mindful. Yeah, I think some people are scared of that. Yeah, I think the writing though helps because mm. I, since I started journaling, which is why I thought about it, which is what supported me to do it. So now we're on that subject, what would be like the tips that you'd give to someone? I know you said like, make sure you've got a pen, a nice notebook. Mm -hmm. What other tips would you give to someone who's like just starting to start getting into writing? That's the first thing I think, make sure that you've got a really nice pen and pad. And even if you can't afford an expensive one, because they're ridiculous money if you want to pay that, which is great, but you can just go in a pound shop and even in there you can find one that will appeal to your mentality, whether it's got a unicorn on or an inspirational quote on the front or whatever, Marvel superheroes, you can find a book that resonates with you. And all, have a small one. Don't buy one of these massive big A4 ones. Just get a small one that you can put either in your backpack or in your handbag or your pocket and always have it with you because as a writer, you need inspiration wherever you go. And even just sat in a coffee shop, listening to it. I know you shouldn't listen to other people's conversations, but it's a really good way of picking up some tips for your writing and how people actually speak rather than how it's written on the page. Do you know so, what? Sorry to interrupt, but I just thought I'm really bad for it. And I, I just wanted to know if I was the only person that does this. Like I'll accidentally listen to people's conversations and then join in. <laughs> Sometimes like. you can't resist it. <laughs> <laughs> it amazes me the pr the private conversations people have on the phone that they don't appreciate how much secret information they're giving away mm -hmm. by being one end of a phone call. But what's a good way of getting your imagination going for writing? is imagining who's at the other end of that phone call Ooh. and sort of building up a mental picture of that person and what they look like and where they live and all that so that's quite good but I just think having the and also always have your book at the side of your bed because mm -hmm. the best ideas will come to you at daft o'clock two o'clock in the morning scribble it down or if you can't get to your pad and pen or you don't want to put a light on dictate it into your phone and I know people say you shouldn't have your phone by your bed, but I'm realistic and nearly everybody has the phone by the bed yeah, for alarm clock or whatever. Yeah. But you can dictate a note. I mean, I've done it. And in the morning when I've woken up and listened to my notes, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Where did that come from? And I don't even remember it. So write things down in the middle of the night, but just get into a habit. That's the main thing. I've actually got a course about that, that if you set, I mean, you know yourself, that if you do something regularly, it becomes a habit and once mm. it's a habit hopefully a good habit it doesn't take as much brain power so you don't have to think about it as much yeah because you're building the neural pathways and you're creating new ones yeah so do something regularly every day sit and write and people go i haven't got time but you have to make time and you might not have time now but if you're serious about it you do need to make the time and it might be just when the kettle's boiling that you've got away from the family and the kids watching whatever they're watching you get into the kitchen and just write for five minutes on a piece a piece of paper or scribble some bullet point ideas down or get up half an hour early but you've got to make a commitment i think that's the thing that people think i just don't have time but it's like well have you watched telly today and mm. have you boiled the kettle today and did you wait 10 minutes while your pan was boiling and were you at a bus stop were you sat on the train there's always time if you think about your day and years ago we did like a time management exercise in the office where we had to make a note of every minute of every day what we did and it became a standing joke that you could put pee for personal if you went to the toilet and things like that but <laughs> if you do that unofficially at home and think what do I use every minute of my day for you'll find some time so I think the main thing I would say about writing is just write what you love and about your passion but do it every day and make time for it because you will feel better for it. There's so much evidence now that 
the stress, anxiety, even post-traumatic stress disorder, writing can not cure it, that's too strong a word, but it can definitely help with it, definitely help with the management of it. And that's why I'm so passionate about it, because it got me through the stress of numerous redundancies, bereavement, even one of my short stories is about when I lost my father. So it does, I'm, I'm proof that it helps you move forward. And that's what I want to help other people do as well. Yeah. And I, I completely agree because like I said about the silence in my mind, I mean, before I learned NLP and before I learned to write and journal and use all these sorts of things, I, I like, I had so much negative self-talk going on in my head. I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of it. But once I went through that shift, it was like a cloud had been lifted. So I definitely think it supports with depression, anxiety, um, OCD, you know, anything that, and that could be negative. It really helps because not only are you being inspired, but you know, you're just removing them thoughts out you from your mind. Yeah. If you're journaling or if you're being creative, you're allowing yourself to feel the feelings of you know, that are the opposite of the feelings that you don't want to have. So, I mean, one of the podcasts I listen to, she actually explains, she's a writer, and she explains that some of the most dark novels and the, the writers who write really gothic horror and really dark, dark writing, in real life are the happiest people that she's met because they get the, the trauma and the dark shadow of your personality out into the paper. That's so interesting. Wow. So talk to us about when you started then, because I know you just mentioned about being in corporate. Mm -hmm. um, so when, when did it all start? Because you didn't start off as a writer, did you? You didn't like go to school, college, and then... No, definitely writer. not. So um, let's rewind and... Yeah, back in more. the day, <laughs> <laughs> I left school with my O-levels that they were called then. Um, it wasn't... University sort of wasn't an option unless you were rich in those days. It was, it was just not something that you did. You just... There was very few people I think at our school went to university um, you just went straight into a job so I did that went into the army came out after the army which was like total immersement I wanted something that was just good to work come back switch off and do what I wanted and, how long were you in the army for um less than a year but it was massive I do believe in national service which I know a lot of people don't believe in but I think it massively impacts your discipline your personality, your respect for yourself, mm. watch for other people. It's not all about saluting to the officers and things. It's yeah. self-respect and it definitely a work ethic and a social aspect. So that I'm a firm believer in that from a community mm -hmm. aspect, yeah. you know, an empowerment thing. Um, and for women's empowerment as well, it's definitely something that is worth looking at, for youngsters who are a bit lost. Um, but I did that, came out, wanted to just a corporate job that then ended up working about a daft number of hours doing a nightclub job and a full-time office job roll on about 10 15 years because it just once you're in a job you end up paying the bills and i bought a house which was amazing because i thought i'm paying out rent and that's a luxury a lot of people don't have nowadays i realized that but i was lucky that at that time you could actually buy a property that was fairly cheap so I managed to get on the property ladder bought a house this was all on my own so I was really proud of sort of my achievements yeah. my and own. it sounds incredible because you said you left the armor and you wanted something where you could just go to work finish and switch off and that sounds like just what you created yeah and it was great and I loved it and I was really good at my job and I got promoted and I traveled around the country doing you know with blue chip companies and I was quite often the only woman there that at me board meetings. I can still remember my first board meeting where it was a huge big boardroom table with men, all corporate men, suits and ties, all sat around the table. And somebody asked a question and my manager went, and over to, and I just went, <gasps> and I could feel that bright red. I'm like, oh no. And every, it just looked like everybody went like that. And looked straight at me and the fear was so much but I got up through it I picked my papers up and went through it and I think that initiation of fire is something that people need I think they need to be challenged and you know the first time I made a corporate phone call to a client that was a really important client everybody in the office sat back and went like that while I made the phone call you know sort of folded their arms and looked at mm. me and got the cups of tea right go on then like, oh. but I did it and I think 
sometimes we're a bit mollycoddled and a bit protected and we don't step out of our comfort zone whereas I was forced to I could probably see traumatic memories in here somewhere <laughs> cause I <could> <laughs> them. but I got through them and I think then redundancies started kicking in the atmosphere got you know as things changed I mean I was in the days where it was before computers so when computers first came in and we changed from carbon paper to computers it that was when job losses started and it got quite toxic quite quickly because people were being made redundant they'd obviously got stress of the managers were stressed because they were having to get rid of the staff that were loyal there was so much negativity around and I got made redundant a couple of times and I was I felt disempowered at that point that this was just like I'm really good at my job and it doesn't matter if they're shutting the department down it doesn't matter whether you're good at your job or not mm. I went through that came out the other side and decided that I was going to do something different but I couldn't have, I was a single mum by this point as well so I couldn't just pack my job in because I had a mortgage and a child and all this so I started studying for a degree at that point so that's when I went to university because I realised that when I was looking at other jobs, I wouldn't be able to get them without better qualifications because I was up against people 20 and 30 years younger with degrees. So I thought, better get myself a degree then. So, and that was when I looked at writing because I'd always been a book fan. I'd always had my nose in a book. So I decided, right, I'm going to do writing. So I did literature, did it while my daughter was swimming, that sort of thing, you know, whenever there was a spare minute. And that's where I say, if you want something badly enough, you'll find the time. Yeah, it's so I was inspiring. Five till seven in the morning as a single mum. And after my daughter had gone to bed, I was studying then. So you find the time. It's hard. It's hard work. But if you want something enough, you can work for it and get there. Mm. So I did that. And then maybe done it again. Changed career paths. Two or three times I had to pivot, which is something I now coach people in that, at the time a pivot is almost like a bereavement because it can totally pull the rug from underneath you if you're losing a job after 30 years or whatever people are really traumatized by it and I think that is underestimated the stress of that yeah oh I've just got goosebumps yeah it's horrible it's really the change in your life isn't it yeah and in a paper it's just, I've seen it again this morning in the news you know this factory might shut down people underestimate how much that impacts the whole family mm. Um, so that's something I feel strongly about that it yeah. you can come out the other side you just might not be able to see it at that point yeah I mean it's scary enough to choose to change mm. and make the change but then when it's unexpected and it happens to you without any control from you that must be really difficult yeah. it definitely is it impacts on everybody the family the community yeah. everybody and again that's where I think writing can help that you can get your anger down on paper but also the pivot that I pivoted from very I pivoted from insurance into risk management into creativity you know I've turned things that were a hobby into a career and if I can do it at my age and I'm still learning every day like this afternoon I'll be learning about some email management system that's changed every day is a school day and it's exciting mm. I've been really frustrated when I hear women and women that are quite young quite often oh i'm not tech i'm not techie oh i don't understand it well go and learn then like <laughs> and you know people who are my age i'm in my 50s and people go oh do you remember back then and it's like yeah it was horrible <laughs> you know <laughs> you always look back as if it was wonderful when they were children and sometimes it really wasn't the future is fantastic we've got so many opportunities across the globe now and the media might try and hammer us down and tell us how bad everything is. And there is bad in the world, don't get me wrong, but you can make your little bit of difference. You can be positive and you can move forward and learn something new every day and go out and buy a nice pen and write things down and do something positive because you really can move forward. Yeah. Sorry, that's a bit of a rambling. No, honestly, it was, it's so inspiring to hear, hear your journey and like how it all pieces together. Um, I think more than anything like seeing that you were a single mum and you were made redundant so you were going through that traumatic change but then also you then decided and committed to showing up for yourself and then you went to uni and 
you sorted it out. <laughs> like, you know, you made your life happen. You achieved and followed your biggest, boldest dream. And now you're traveling around the world and you're coaching people who you love to work with and you write in every single day, which is what you love doing. Yeah. Like that is inspiring. And it's, and that is success. Like everyone's version of success is different, isn't it? But in terms of you and your journey, that is, it's just so inspiring. I'm so grateful for you to, to be chatting with us about it. Um, I think we can be so guilty for getting into our own heads and believing that we've not done all the things that we need to do. But when we actually start to look at things from a different perspective, we've done everything we ever wanted and more. Mm. I think my biggest inspiration, because I've got a why, like Simon Sinek says, get your why mm. as to why are you doing this and really drill down as to your fundamental why are you doing it. But one of the things that, stuck, that inspired me was when I lost my father, um, he actually, on, literally on his deathbed, said that he'd done everything he wanted to do and he'd seen everything he wanted to see and he needed to go. And I thought that was so powerful because what a luxury to be able to say your goodbyes because not everybody has that luxury of saying goodbye knowing that you've seen your family grow you've seen them settled you know they're happy and they're secure because everybody does die and they have to die at their time sometimes obviously people are taken when it's not their time and that's horrific but people do die and we forget we hide it especially in our culture in the uk we hide that we don't like dealing with grief it's like oh chin up you know don't cry and we sort of put this face on but I think we need to remember that you do die that life is short and you've got to go out and grab it and don't put things off until you retire because you might not have the health you might not have the wealth you might not have the time at that point or the money or the, the world might be different by then so if you want to do something pursue it with a passion and do it now and make the time now and have those memories now and you can look back on them when you're older but what a luxury to be able to say at the end that you've done it all that you wanted I think that was wonderful and I hold that thought now that I never want to get to the pearly gates or whatever else we get to at the end of this journey and go oh, if only I'd have done that I want to be gone oh, I did it but oh my word it was hard or oh how embarrassing or oh, I wish I hadn't, but I'd much rather say I wish I hadn't than I wish I had. So that's why I keep in mind like all the time. That's my positivity that I, have to, I want to get to that point that I'm, I'm happy with everything that I did. I can't speak now because you're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was, well, it was hard at the time, but what a luxury to be able to say that. Yeah. And that's what keeps me going, that I want people to pursue the passions and, you know, be passionate about it. Yeah, completely, completely. Gosh, I don't even know what to ask you next because I think you've just completely <laughs> trumped it. Um, <laughs> I don't apologise. So, so you've, so we've gone through your journey and we've kind of got an idea of how you work with people now. But what if you could sum up in like one or two sentences? What would be the one thing that you'd want to leave with our listeners? Don't be scared of moving away from things. So many people, whatever age, hang on to things from the past, like a security blanket. Try and be more minimal and try and... There's a podcast that I listen to that's basically love people, not things. Mm. And that's such a good philosophy that try and look forward instead of always looking back and hanging on to things in your past. And it might be people that you need to let go. Because I hear quite a lot of people who want to be writers or they are starting on their writing journey. And they're quite often told by family, but even by partners and friends and parents that, oh, who do you think you are being a writer and get a proper job? Or well, what are you writing for? It's a waste of time. Nobody reads books anymore. And people do read and people always will. But the writing isn't, the publishing isn't the goal. The writing is the goal that you're putting words down to express yourself and if you have to leave some people behind to be able to express yourself and move forward with passion and pursue what you want then you have to do that so just don't be frightened of leaving things behind is my advice yeah oh thank you so much for being with us today it's been so lovely thank you
you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. <laughs> Don't forget to always speak your truth and be who you are because there is someone out there today who needs to hear your message. If you need anything from us at all, head over to the femaleentrepreneursnetwork.com and check us out. You'll find everything you could possibly need over there. Have an amazing day and I'll catch you on the next episode.